Today, I am going to show you how this machine behind me is an absolute modern marvel. It is the most versatile, the most capable, the most technologically advanced machine of its kind. And it makes programming a part like this, which is used in hip surgery, actually really, really easy. So I'm excited to finally show you this machine and all of its capabilities. It's my favorite machine here at Titan CNC, the Toro Swiss Deco 36. Let's get into it. Now the part we're making in today's video is a femoral bionic nail. And how this gets used in surgery is disgusting. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about showing you how with the right equipment making a part like this can be extremely easy. So with a machine like this comes a lot of complexities. And when you have three programs like this running all at once, a lot of stuff is going on and it can be really hard to keep track of. But right out of the gate, you can see with the Tysa software on this machine, how synchronized everything is. I mean, really, it's so easy how everything's lined up. My weight codes are synced in blue. The superimposed cutting, like the double turning you see, that's synced right here in green. I mean, really, as far as like just being easy on the eyes, I don't know why I'm still holding this. As far as being easy on the eyes goes, this really is the way to go. This is the best control I've ever seen as far as looks go. Everything you're seeing in the machining footage is programmed by hand. I didn't use cam software for any of this. And I feel like one thing that I see a lot of people get kind of intimidated by is the B-axis moving. So I really wanna show you how simple that actually can be. So let's take a look at the first toolpath you see the B-axis do, right? So let's go up to chamfer center hole right here. Now you'll see that tool wrap it up and then you'll see the whole B-axis rotate. But if you pay attention to the tip of the center drill, the B-axis is rotating around the point, the tip of that tool. And how that's all done is with G925. So. How does G925 work? Well, unlike normal machines where you have to memorize all this stuff, I can just click on my G code, click on wizard, and I can see all the possible variables. So, you'll notice the first variable is TWP. Well, TWP is tilted work plane. And what that means is, is no matter what angle my tool is at, the tool itself is the program Z axis. When I move at an angle, I'm actually using two axes at once, but in my program, I'm only using one. It's called a virtual axis. So it doesn't matter if I'm at 50 degrees, 40 degrees, whatever, Z is going to be in line with my tool. So you'll notice at the beginning of this part, I programmed a center drill at the front, and then at the end of the part, I programmed a drill at an angle. Well, both those tool paths are actually programmed exactly the same. The only difference is, is the B I put on my G925 line. But with that being said, and then how did I program the second tool path? Where I'm using a ball nose end mill, my B axis is at an angle, but I'm actually moving in line with the normal Z axis of the machine. Well, I'll show you. Down to my next tool path, the G925 down there, you'll notice there's a difference. There's an A2 instead of an A1. Well, what is that? Well, luckily we have our handy dandy wizard. You could open it up and you'll see TCP. Well, TCP stands for tool center point. So it's gonna rotate around the tip of that tool, but it's gonna keep the normal axes of the machine. So when I'm moving Z, my tool might be at an angle, but it's moving in line with the Z2 axis of the machine. So those are the two different types of modes you can use for the B axis. There's a little bit more to it, but mainly, you now know how the B axis works on a Torno Swiss Deco. It's really not that bad. So moving on from that, there was a kind of another cool thing that I want to talk about with that ball nose end mill at an angle. So like, let's take a look at the four flutes in the front of this part, right? I could have programmed four different flutes, but it's a lot more convenient if I could program one flute. But there's a problem. You'll notice I'm using a steady rest, which we just made a video about. If you haven't watched that, check right here. But I had to make a steady rest to balance that part. So for me to balance that part and mill this part, I'd have to have all these weight codes and everything in sync. So it'd be kind of cool if I could use a while statement, but I'd have to use a while statement for both sides. And what was really impressive to me was that this control was intelligent enough for me to program a while statement on both sides and put a weight code in that while statement to sync up both while statements. And I know I'm kind of going down like a weird rabbit hole of programming, but any of you G-code programmers out there watching this, you will know that's actually kind of impressive. A lot of controls aren't that intuitive, so it's cool that it did that for me. 
All right, so enough about that. Let's talk about some of the physical characteristics of this machine that really make it unique. So right here, we have a nine inch drill, right? Not a lot of machines can even drill nine inches deep. And for this, it was no problem. I just call up that holder in my Tysa software and it knows the center line already. That's really cool and that's really easy. But what's really insane is there's an attachment that actually allows you to run a drill across the front of this turret and you can drill up to 20 inches deep on this machine. And I'm pretty sure there's no other Swiss machine in the world you could drill 20 inches deep on. So that right there is freaking crazy. Now, if you've watched this part get removed while this machine's running, it is absolutely crazy how cool this part ejector is. This knockout rod is gonna push the part all the way onto that tray. Then the tray sucks back, drops down, rotates, and puts your parts right here. Now, I gotta say, I've seen a lot of long workpiece device ejection systems. That's a mouthful. Um, I've seen a lot of long workpiece device ejection systems on Swiss machines. <laughs> this right here, by far, is the nicest. So, again, Tornos. Your products rule. And it is 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna be honest with you guys. We are gonna pick up this video tomorrow. I'm not even wearing shoes right now and I don't know where my dog is. Let's go find my dog and let's go home. So now let's press start on this CNC machine and let's purposely screw it up while it's running. I wanna show you a really, really cool feature on it that will make your life a lot easier. So one thing that's a problem on a lot of Swiss machines is when you hit reset, it starts the program at the top. And that's what I'm gonna show you. On this machine, when you hit reset, it does that. But if you want, you can pick back up anywhere, no problem whatsoever. So check this out, right? It's gonna come up now. It's gonna balance it with the steady rest. It's gonna come in with the end mill. I'll let it start cutting and I'm gonna stop it. All right, and now I'm just gonna hit reset. So right here on a normal Swiss machine, I'd be screwed. I would have to start the whole program over because I saw something was gonna crash or something like that. But instead, I can just do this. So let's just run head one and head two. So I'll do SBC and SBC. That'll run just head one and head two. Now if I want, I can hit start middle of program. I can select right here, select the arrow button, which will then put the arrow right there. Select right here, select the arrow button. And now I could pick right back up there. It'll ask, start from the middle of program. So you just press start again. Everything will go back, it resets, and voila. Now we can pick right back up where we left off. And this already on this part has saved me so much time. There's been several things that I've had to you know, tweak in or whatever because I programmed this whole part by hand. I would probably have gone through a whole nother bar setting this up if it wasn't for this feature. So that is a really, really nice thing to have on a machine for sure. So yeah, that's it for our video today. We went over a bunch of the technical aspects of the Torno Swiss Deco 36. I gotta say with a machine like this, it is impressive to me how a lot of parts out there can actually become really, really easy. But that's not all we're gonna do with this machine. Torno's pretty much dared me to see if I could break this thing. So I'm gonna get a bunch of different ink canals, Hastelays, you name it. And we're gonna see what this thing can do in future videos. We're also gonna have to get a bigger chip bin because that didn't work. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe, we make content like this all the time. And don't be stupid, ring that notifications bell. See ya. The Torno Swiss Deco is such a good machine. Even a puppy can program it. And I'm gonna show you right now how that works. He swipes the screen over. Look at that, now he's programming.